Welcome back to the Fight Pit, ladies and gentlemen. You know the drill. We back every single week. Today we have a very special guest, so stay tuned. Intro music. We back, folks. You know how we do it. It's your boy, Drew Sizzle, the highest in the room. We have 12 Gauge, Gaugeimus Maximus, joining us today. And for the first time in the fight pit, one of the baddest women fighters you will ever meet. One of the homies, homies. It is Jenny <laughs> Savage. Welcome to the, Yes, I was hoping you would get that. I was hoping you would get that. How are you doing today, Jenny? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. And um, how are you guys doing? We're good. Well, well, good. Thank you. Doing better now that you're here. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining us the first time, first of many, hopefully. Oh. Um, we got uh, we got some good stuff coming up in this one to get to know you a little bit and and talk about what you got going on first. I'm gonna give a shout out though to our sponsor PillowFight.co. You know how it goes, everybody. The uh, sleep is very important. It's a 30 year life. You got to take it seriously. Recovery uh, is important. If your recovery is not on point, everything else just especially for me, uh, it's it's all downhill from there. Uh, blissfully soft and shockingly supportive. Their commitment to premium foams and fibers provides superior comfort, all while being soft enough to cradle you to sleep. It is worth every petty. Invest in your rest. Pillow Fight doesn't skimp on the details, neither should you. And they are obsessed with making a difference. Every purchase from Pillow Fight helps them to donate pillows where they are needed most. So thank you very much to Pillow Fight, as always, for sponsoring this episode. Visit PillowFight.co to order and for more information. Now, the moment of truth. We have Bare Knuckle FC Fighter, MMA Fighter, uh, the Tennessee Gangster, Juggalette. The list goes mm -hmm. on. Uh, very excited to have you in, Jenny. Thanks for joining us. How uh, we'll get into how how the fight life is going. Let us know how everything outside of fighting is going for you. Twenty twenty four. Already had a crazy crazy fight with uh, uh, Tay in the last one. That was awesome. Uh, how's everything outside of fighting been for you this year? Well, it's been pretty interesting. I've uh, for the first time in a decade. I've had to sit out. Uh, I mean, I four months is really nothing when you think about uh, how many times we have to wait, you know, throughout the year. So many people cancel on us. Um, fight camps kind of fall through. That's always normal. Sometimes it'll be six months to a year. You only fight like once. But it's a whole different ballpark when you're like out because you're you're injured. And while there's things that I could do, there's all kinds of stuff that I do, like uh, running and just doing basic stuff that I'm allowed. Uh, I can't punch, and that's usually how I get all my frustrations out. So I've had to be really creative and dive into um, the sweet science of boxing and sort of study it from kind of like a different perspective. Uh, so life outside of it, it's forced me to be uh, to slow down and be more patient and um, kind of pay attention to my home life a little more. Um, take care of my son, nourish him and his uh, career uh, that he's currently in. Um, we're we're trying to turn him into a nice uh, little artist. He's already there. He's he's got all the supplies. He's into graphic design. So uh, I just want to supplement Adrian, uh, my my boyfriend, my uh, future husband over there. <laughs> I want to supplement his uh, pro wrestling career. So that's kind of what life has been like outside of uh my my uh, fight world that's awesome that's awesome shout out to adrian too i know he's been been competing and everything how's uh how as you know without giving away too much if you're comfortable how has the the injury been for you how, how's things coming along it's it's really well i mean it, it was very bittersweet uh because uh i feel like i didn't lose and if i lost i didn't lose by unanimous decision i thought that was kind of wild and uh, surreal um, because it was, I don't know, it was it was no more pressure for me. So that, that was the good part. That was the surreal part. And I wasn't as sad as I thought I would be losing. Um, it was sort of like, this 
this handbrake was like, I don't know. I don't know. It was like a, a blessing in disguise, I guess you could say. So um, my hand is fully healed. It just snapped right in half. Um, it was about right here from throwing the overhand real hard in the third round. Um, my hand was like, I felt it in my elbow and then I felt it in my shoulder and then I felt it in my neck. And I was like, okay, well, I feel like I won this fight. Uh, you know, I I guess you could say I was pacing myself due to my, my thumb injury. And I didn't want any further um, injury to my, to my left hand. And that's what was winning me the fight. So um, in my mind, she didn't hit me. Uh, she didn't, I mean, she hit my braids. She got me right here, of course, caused me to have a nosebleed, but I have a nosebleed every fight. Sometimes it just goes right in my throat because my nose, I have a broken, I, I broke my orbital and this bridge. So it causes my blood to flow a little different. Um, it can really make someone else look like a real tough person, you know what I mean? Like makes them look like they're the one that's winning the fight. Um, especially when they're already the one that's the favorite. So um, when my hand broke, I really didn't think of it as anything. I just didn't want it to, to uh, get any more injured. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't. I haven't talked about or I haven't spoke about my hand, so I'm a little flustered and kind of at a loss for words. Uh, just because if you seen her at the airport, you and you seen me at the airport, you would have been like, "There's no way." So to to lose like that back to back, the last loss was against Brent Hart rematch uh, for the world title. It just feels like I don't know. I guess I needed to get out of the pressure. I I, I feel like you know. I didn't win my world title, so it was a good, uh, I'm a good gatekeeper, I guess you could say, of the strawweight division, and that's not where I wanted to be. So, excuse me if I'm all over the place with my, uh, the way I speak about this, it's just, when you feel like you're on top of the world, and you feel like you had everything, just to uh, lose everything to a hand injury, you were waiting for like almost a year to have a fight, to be put on the prospect series, uh, when... You know, you, you know that this is the opportunity to shine. Uh, this was a rematch between me and Britton Hart. I mean, uh, Taylor Starling. So I thought this was the a good redemption moment. And to, uh, yeah, to I don't know. I, I I don't really know how to how to finish what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I was frustrated. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's but I'm okay now. 100% understandable. Thank you for opening up about that too. We appreciate it. And it's, you know in the, the eyes of the fans personally you didn't have a scratch on you at all yeah. <laughs> but, you know something that stood out to us i personally i don't feel like you lost much in in any kind of stock at all i don't think that that was a fight where anybody went up or down uh that was that was one that was it was a phenomenal fight and you you showed out you showed out you did the damn thing and left without a scratch on you look like you were fresh i i couldn't even tell that there was anything up at the end too so you had a you had a solid poker face and the youth at this point uh featured fight on the prelims main card co-main event i don't i don't see anywhere else for you to go except main event next and i think they'd be crazy for you to 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 not have you in a main event you're one of the the, the biggest names in in bare knuckle and one of the most exciting all of your fights are it doesn't matter who you're fighting what kind of discipline it is all of your fights are just just badass so uh don't don't be don't be too hard on yourself you're doing a fantastic job and you've uh you've taken to uh coaching and everything now too how's how's that been going for you how's uh you know they say you know if you want to learn something teach it so uh how has how has teaching been uh been changing things for you that's exactly what's happened. Um, I'm, at, I'm I'm actually relearning the sport of boxing. It's not like I really consider myself a pure boxer. I I see myself as a mixed martial artist. Uh, I see myself as a striker. Um, I I'm a little humble when it comes to the word boxer, you know. Um, so I try to relearn it alongside my students, and I myself as a student for, of them, you know, like uh, they're they're teaching me as much as I'm learning. I mean, as as much as I'm teaching them. So. That's definitely the blessing. I feel like I was mess missing out on the charity part of boxing, and I always wanted to figure out how to give back to my community. Um, and it's really just being a, a student and a teacher at the same time of the sport and to give myself um, to the gym uh, more often and just try to 
be a, an asset of wild side um and help out the uh, the other coaches so i feel like it's a it's a good way to uh keep my mind off of things that don't really matter things that don't really fulfill uh the future of the sport and when you look at the bigger picture that's really what we're all trying to do is improve uh whatever we can in, in combat sport uh, in our own little way just like everybody has a song inside of them um everybody has a story i believe that everybody has something to offer um combat sports no matter what level you're on amen to that that's beautiful that's beautiful gage what do you got for jenny uh you already alluded to it so sorry to keep going back to it but you give a lot of pros and cons the last four months spent with the hand and everything recovering and trying to do your best to heal your own body and juggle being a mom, being supportive to Adrian and his career and everything as well, which is enough to juggle at once anyway without trying to heal. Taking that step back and taking a deep breath for the last four months, looking forward now, how has that given you a different perspective going forward now that you've taken a deep breath, able to refocus and be able to try to do things like you said, teaching and being a, more of a student of the game from a different perspective going forward? I feel like we take the entertainment part too seriously, or at least I did. And I feel like I didn't want to be like like an attention whore, but I wanted to fulfill um, my purpose and the amount of time that I had, the amount of um, ring time and air time that I, that I that I had to tell my story and to um, sort of uh, just help anybody, you know, but I realized I needed to help myself first. I can't help people if I, if I if I don't help myself. And I think it's because I felt guilty um, and was a little confused on pride in the self. And I don't mean to get a little choked up, but you know what? I don't I don't care to be vulnerable. Like I I'm very open. Um, I think that that's what martial arts is about uh, is to allow people in the future to to stand on our shoulders because that's what we're doing. And a lot of us forget that. So it allowed me to take a moment and uh, see that we take this, this this stuff way too serious and we need to have fun because um, we become a slave in many ways. We need to be careful and we need to look out for the people who are looking up to us and, uh, and be a champion of those people. It doesn't matter if we have a physical championship to to brag about you know those things they're, they're gonna they're gonna rust they're gonna wither moths are gonna get to them and we get so wrapped up in what other people think so i think that that's what this time off has allowed me to do and like i said i'm really surprised that i wasn't as upset and i think taylor um her reaction to the victory was what allowed me to not freak out too much she was very humble about her victory and I didn't think she would have been. I think that she knows that that there needs to be another rematch, or you know, I'm, you know, I'm deserved. And so that doesn't take anything away from her, and that doesn't take nothing away from me. And I feel like at the end of the day, uh, the entertainment part is going to take care of itself. We don't have to worry about it. That's beautiful. That's deep. I love it. I love it. And you're obviously, you know taking it as the the best way possible uh life i mean everybody here everybody watching everybody listening we've all we all go through stuff and it's about you know how you come out of it and and what you take from it and as, as a martial artist too that's very important being able to uh keep rolling and and pick yourself up and dust yourself off and keep going and You've, you're batting a thousand in that regard. So you're doing a, doing a fantastic job. We're very proud of you too. You're, you're, you're killing it in every aspect and handling, you know, something like that an injury, juggling all the things you said, like Gage too, just, just having to deal with all that too. It can, it can test you and you're, you're passing. So don't forget to give yourself credit. You're doing a, you're doing a great job. Um, the, uh, one thing that I wanted to ask about too. So you were a ring girl at one point and having like gone from being a ring girl to a fighter to one of the the most badass female fighters that's that's walking the earth um is that something that you know did you did you get into being a ring girl and then decide that that was something you want to do was or was the plan always to fight and that was kind of like getting your foot in the door how did that uh, how did that transition go for you well i was uh 
before I I got to dating Adrian um, about ten years ago, I was actually like a, into modeling. I specifically liked being a video vixen. I was in um, several videos uh, locally. I I worked with uh, the Gemini Twins uh, here in Tennessee. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, I actually got to do a music video for Project Pat, and uh, which he featured in. Uh, I got to meet Young Buck. I got to meet Yellow Wolf, uh, DJ Paul, a lot of people. So that was kind of uh, my environment. Um, and I was really down with the clown, you know, always uh, <laughs> since birth. Uh, my mom was always uh, on the, the juggalo scene. So this was just kind of my thing. Um, but when I got with Adrian, I, I kind of like, you know, he had a fight uh, for a championship. Uh, amateur championship for v3 fight i think they've uh what fight what did they turn into adrian cffc um so they turned into cffc it's uh, shout out to them shout out to jason letterfine um he really put us on um but what was i saying so yeah uh <laughs> i didn't want nobody else being a ring girl uh for adrian's uh championship fight uh, i didn't care about you know i wasn't jealous or anything i just wanted to be a ring girl that night and uh, I was already training underneath him. Um, we actually go back to high school where I, I used, we used to wrestle with each other. And he was the, the uh, what were you? You were a captain? Well, anyways, yeah. So that's where we met. <laughs> and so I just didn't want nobody else being the ring girl for him. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, so as far as like when you when you were training and everything, what uh, this is... I try not to do the, you know, run of the mill questions. I promise this is like one of the only ones. What was it that initially got you into martial arts? Was it something that you, you know, kind of came up with and was always a staple or was there like a certain moment, something that made you decide, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, learn how to fight and be one of the best. I've always wanted to be into martial arts. I just didn't know that that's what I wanted. I just, I got into boxing in middle school. Uh, my mom, thought that I was crazy, said no, got into wrestling. She, again, didn't like that for me. And then um, I actually got with a old high school friend. I was trying to help her one day. She uh, pretty much used me um, to get back at her ex-boyfriend and she committed a crime uh, and I was with her guilty by association. Uh, she was just getting her stuff back out of a car and it caused me to uh, run, run and flee. Uh, she left the car door open. I guess she was just trying to get her stuff. And um, because the door was open, the car door was open, we got like a vehicular robbery charge. <laughs> and uh, she like all blamed there. it all on me. Yeah, she blamed it on me. And, uh, <laughs> she turned herself in, didn't tell me. Like, we, we thought, I thought I was gonna just like, you know, help her, you know, so that one of us would go to jail and the other one would be like helping the other. Like I was gonna get a job and everything and I had my kids. So like that really pissed me off. Like I, I, I told Adrian, I said, I want to beat the shit out of her and I don't want to go to jail again. So can we, uh, I got to fight. So uh, the rest was history. Like I was always meant to be a mis uh, mixed martial artist. So I believe it. That's evident. That's evident. Gage, what else do you got for Jenny, sir? Oh, uh, just looking forward now. Uh, just want to say on the, the entertainment part that you brought up, your personality and what you do and bring to the sport and what you do and the ring will take care of that of itself. And glad you took that step back and realized it's gonna take care of itself just being you. So that's awesome thing go for. So what do you want for your next step? What's next for Jenny Savage now that you're full clear and you're ready to get rolling again? Well, hopefully I can get myself back into the contender spot, but I know because I've already been there, um, there's other deserving fighters who are waiting for that position. Um, I guess I have to kind of just pick my the best fights that I can. I want to make the most uh, out of them. I want um, I want to really just have like I, pretty much what what makes the promotion look better at this point. Um, I feel like it's owed to the BKFC out of me to be more entertaining. I feel like the last two fights I went all five rounds. Um, I'm not mad at my performance. I feel like. Maybe the reason why I didn't do so well with Taylor was I didn't want her to hit me in the face. <laughs> she got the Satan of Sigil or, or uh, Satan Sigil on her hand. I don't know something about that. I don't want you to touch my face with that. That's understandable. So I just, maybe I was a little bit too, like, I don't think I was gun shy. I just, uh, I wanted to hit her with that shot and I did, but then it broke my hand and I had to keep my composure. 
So uh, I'm not mad at my performance. I just know that now we got to switch it up. We got to know. Uh, we got we got to have a better plan. I so I think that we can do that by taking what the BKFC is is offering me and just making it look easy. That's that's what we can do forward. I'm patient. I know that my time will come. Um, I'm just taking another trip around the mountain. That happens. That happens. That's part of life. And and there's personally, regardless of of who ends up coming out of that next fight, I don't want to see them fight anybody other than you. That's just I might just be what biased. <laughs> I might I might, I might just that I, I I I can't think of anybody. I can't think of anybody. <laughs> there's nobody else that I want to see either of them fight. Uh, the weigh-in outfits, right? Yeah. You have. That no matter who it is that you're fighting, you are always just fitted to the to the nines. How do you decide what the theme is going to be? Is it something that just kind of comes to you? Do you plan it out? Is there is there any rhyme or reason to it? Uh, always entertaining, just like from when the fight is announced till the fight is over. You're just nonstop entertainment. And uh, how is it? How is it that you decide? What the theme is going to be for those is it something that you that you you know kind of map out and have a game plan for or is it just off the cuff it literally just comes to me um the sailor moon thing was sort of like from the pandemic i was very upset because my son's dad um took his life and at the time i was thank you um it, it's okay he um i loved him as much as i could and his son we loved him so much um he just had another life and but it's okay um we 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 live in him like we don't let him die in vain you know that's what this whole thing is about that's really right. what it got me into bare knuckle was uh, just having enough of of depression you know but even though i was swimming in it like i said i had to help myself but that's what the whole sailor moon thing represented i was in the middle of uh, college and i was just been watching and i realized how much in common i felt or i, I kind of like resonated with sailor moon <laughs> and so I don't know. I just seen it uh, one day walking in a uh, hot topic and I was like, dude, I'm going to wear that way in. And it was the best thing ever. So I practiced like the whole movement and it's just kind of become my uh, part of my persona is just being the strongest woman in anime. And I just think that's badass. It's like even if she lost like a battle, she was still considered the, the strongest. Um, and that's that, that feels like me. And plus, I got long hair like Sailor Moon. So and uh <laughs> We all know uh, a, bit, a product of the 90s, Sailor Moon was everywhere. So um, just having a, her a part of my childhood, it kind of evoked uh, her character uh, for that fight. And I feel like, I don't know, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have weighed in any other way. This other time, though, um, Violent J, he hit me up on my birthday and uh, I was so sad about losing to Britton Hart that I was like, you know what, I'm paying homage to this dude. And I got to see him and Ouija Mac and Isham uh, for the uh, Fire Breathing Dragon uh, <clears throat> tour, excuse me. And it was just like surreal. It's like, I don't know, this whole experience has just been so like, just awesome. I just sit back and just enjoy, uh, enjoy the ride, you know? I got that's to be a part of it. Do. Yeah. So that's yeah. how I came up with the idea. Of, I don't know. <laughs> I think that was easily one of the coolest weigh-ins uh, of all time in any sport. That was, you know, having a, like a jugglet and Street Fighter. That's you can't beat Dude, that. I was this close from fucking weighing as, as Chun Li, but the outfit I got, my cheeks was out, man. I don't, you know, I feel like that, that shit. People really want to see them cheeks, so I don't. I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna save that for for Adrian. You know what I mean? <laughs> understandable, understandable. I I think you made the right choice. There's, I mean, if anybody knows, you know, ICP and and Juggalo, they're some scary mofos, just mm -hmm. crazy mofos. That's one of the last people I would want to be lined up against. That's, <laughs> you know, I'm I, I'm sure I could handle it, but I'd be worried. I'd be worried. There, <laughs> there's no telling, no telling what's gonna go on. Um, Gage, back to you, brother. Is there any way going forward that you now tweak your camp going forward or things that you just think would benefit you a little more going forward? Like future, always focus on the future kind of thing now. Yes. Uh, that's, that's always been my theme is evolve. That's why a lot of people go, man. 
every time I see you, you look different, you fight different. Um, that's what I'm, I'm always on the up and up. I always want to evolve and adopt other um, kind of uh, ways of being successful. I just look at the people I look up to. Um, I kind of get it from the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. You guys should look into it if you haven't. It. It's uh, a really awesome book. Towards the end of it, it, it talks about creating a council. And um, the council that I have is uh, like Holly Holm, um, Muhammad Ali. Um, I have Wilma Rudolph. I've got um, just a, a lot of people um, just that I keep in my council, my grandfathers. Um, who both served in Vietnam. Uh, I always ask them questions mentally and I get kind of like a good response uh, when I think about their, um, just, just how they were. And um, it makes things easier uh, to go forward and, and to just be more optimistic of just, I mean, this, this world is so vast. We got so many people in it, so many opportunities. And when you take a step back, back from all this stuff, you realize Nobody cares. They just, you know, everybody's in their own world. We're all NPCs to everyone. And uh, we're the main character of our own uh, story. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Speaking of uh, main characters and your love <laughs> of anime, we already touched on that. As someone who has anime tattoos all like all over, <laughs> just kind of watching anything good recently, new, getting new inspiration for next time out. Oh, man, I've, I've been trying to. I've been listening to my son. I'm not going to lie. He uh, keeps me... Um, kind of like he, he keeps me filled in with all the cool stuff so anytime i want to uh look over his shoulder to try to get inspiration he, he does that right now he's kind of like i don't know i don't know i guess he's he's figuring out what show he likes so what show are you guys watching right now one piece yeah so uh i'm gonna be Classic. picking his brain really soon because he's he was settling figuring out what he wanted to kind of binge on so right now i've just been watching boxing just non-stop boxing, boxing, boxing. I'm, I can't get enough uh, of film. So I let them do all the, the nerding out, and then I nerd out after I'm kind of a poser. <laughs> I mean, it, that four <laughs> months laid up, that's that's about as much time you need to watch one piece of, like, right. one, over 1,000 episodes of that. Man, I'm going to. I'm going to I'm gonna pick up after him. I'm going to be like, is it worth it, or do I need a, uh, what do I need to watch? Oh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, back to you, hey. Drew. That's all I got on my little nerd segment. Hey, I, I honestly, I try to keep it contained as much as I can, but this is all that I've ever wanted is to just nerd out on fighting and anime. Um, you mentioned uh, Holly Holm. Shout out to Holly, the legend. Training at uh, Jackson Wink. How has that been? How has, uh, you know, training with Holly and, and being around that atmosphere, it's, you know, the people coming out of that gym since the dawn of time has just been nothing but some of the best in the world. Uh, so how's it, how's it, how's everything been being around, you know, that atmosphere, that environment out in Albuquerque, uh, one of the, the meccas for uh, MMA champions? What's, what's life like out there? How has that, you know, impacted your, your fight career? Oh man, the hospitality was something I didn't expect. Um, they they have been nothing but completely like loving and, and just selfless. It's just a beautiful thing. It, it reminds me of my home team here um, and at Wildside. It's, it's a definitely, I can see why they bred so many champions because they're just so, um, there's so much information that's just just going across the room and so many different camps, so many different cultures. Um, Holly herself was just a joy. I, I felt like a, <laughs> I felt like an eight year old. I felt like a, I'm like, dang, this is like the baddest woman on the planet. And she, she, she looks, she's looking at me. Like I, I literally was tripping over my words. Um, it's not really hard to do. Uh, I don't want to sound like um, a jerk, but I don't really get starstruck that often. But she completely, I was eating out of the palm of her hand. So she was probably like, who the hell is this weird ass bitch? And how long do I have to entertain her? <laughs> but I was just like, oh, your hair is long like mine. <laughs> what the hell? Who says shit like that from the first time meeting them? I'm like, yeah, you just grow it. I can't say I blame you at all. I've been, I totally understand not getting starstruck, but there's just some people that they just bring it out of you. They, they're you're like, man, I'm trying to contain it. I'm trying to be cool, but you have no idea how insane this is for me. As far as uh, your your fighting career in 
either uh you know bare knuckle or mma who would you say was the toughest fight who was the one you know whether it was a, the outcome of it doesn't matter but i just want to know who was the person that once you left the cage you were like that that bitch is tough oh man uh i do have a lot of them i want to say britain hart it was very tough um when i blacked her eye uh the first fight like we were going crazy um but when I blacked her, I was like, yes, I just got to hit her one more time, cut her open. Uh, yeah, she turned it up on me. Like, she she hates me. So uh, I've never fought anybody as tough as her. Um, but I want to say amateur-wise, there was a girl, um, her name was Anna Abrams. And no matter how many times I hit that girl, man, I, I, I hit her so as hard as I could. And that girl just, she just wrestled me. She won by, uh, um, I don't want to be like all mean, but by lay and pray. That's what everybody kept saying. Uh, she just laid on me and uh, she she got the decision, but uh, her toughness pissed me off. Like, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> All of the fights, like I said, that you've been in are just nonstop action. Just incredible fights. If you guys haven't gone through the whole uh, the whole collection of Jenny Savage fights, make sure you guys check that out. Uh, Gage, do you have another one for Jenny? Who out in any style, in any, be it bare knuckle, be it full MMA or anything, who would you across any time have loved to be standing across from? Oh, man. You know, I like B. Wynn. I just think she's beautiful. Uh, I love her story. I loved watching her like as my career was going on. Uh, I don't really know her that well. I just always see her pop up all the time. And I just I would love it would be an honor to fight her um, respectfully. I used to think the same way at same same last name. Uh, I used to think about uh, Andy Wynn. I used to think about her the same way, but she just completely like I don't know what I did to her, but she hates my ass. So I was like, you know, you know, fuck me, is fuck you too. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, uh, B Wynn is somebody that I've always seen throughout my career. Uh, her and Rose Namajumas. I kind of want to train. My headphones went out, but I, I kind of more want to train with Rose now. But man, uh, I would take an ass kicking. I, I would take an ass kicking from Rose Namajumas. I would too, honestly. She's <laughs> she's one of the greatest. One of the greatest. If you had to go back, um, let's say ten years or so, um, if you now were going to give yourself ten years ago one piece of advice, what's one thing that you would tell yourself back then? Embrace haters, man. You need them. They're actually your biggest fans because they secretly like you. Over time, my haters have turned around. Was like, you know what? You won me over. And by that time, I'm like, man, fuck you. But <laughs> they still, hey, they're my biggest fans. They watch. They they buy everything. They uh, it's so hard to to like them after that. But that's the most best part about it is having your haters just like pay your bills. It's awesome. I want everybody to love me, man. <laughs> it's hard not to. It's like human nature, but being able to embrace the haters it's a very important quality especially in your line of work because if you you know we see it in every level if you you got enough haters you're you're doing well you're, you're doing, doing something well. right nobody hates down it's always hating up so if you got haters you're 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 doing something right um hey. Gabe, anything else i would say drew you got one of them lists one of those either or lists seven of course I do. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. You know me. Um, all right, Jenny. So I'm going to give you some quick rapid fire either ors. You just let us know whichever one you choose. You don't have to. You can pass if you like. Um, and there doesn't need to be any explanation. Jenny Savage owes no uh, any explanation to anybody for anything. Um, Bet. Let us know what you got. Bet. Pizza or burgers. Oh, what was the first one? Pizza or burgers? Hamburgers. I like, I'm, a, I'm a burger queen. I eat burgers. Yes. <laughs> uh, early bird or night owl? Both. It depends on the, the uh, what side of the month we're on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, summer or winter? Summer. All day. Explore space or explore the ocean? I don't like either. They scare the shit out of me. I literally have a phobia of both. I, I'm right there with you. I'm not going anywhere <laughs> at all. I'm with you on the ocean one. No cruises for me. 
Yeah, when I mean, I I saw Gravity and Interstellar, and I was like, that's I, someone else can handle that. I'm good. Top Chop Slide or Homies? Oh man, Homies because that's the first one I heard. Oh, uh, that's my jam. Oh yeah, my jam. Never get injured or eat as much as you want and never have to cut weight. Oh man. I already do the second one, so the first one. Never get injured. <laughs> nice. Uh, cats or dogs? Cats. Where's my cat? Where's my girls? Kimmy. That's two yeah. cats. Oh, no. <laughs> Got two. Uh, Ross. Ross did say cats too. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that too. That was a good yeah. when he talked about his puppy. I thought it was gonna be dogs. My girl right. was getting depressed, man. She needed a friend. They come in pairs. <laughs> uh, um, BJJ or kickboxing? BJJ all day. I don't like kicking that much. I I feel you. I feel you. Uh, dinner in a movie or Netflix and chill? Dinner in a movie. I'm about that that coin. We got to go out. We got to go out. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Join ICP or join Sailor Moon? ICP all day. Woo woo. Look at this. Chapter 17. We are all the pages. Get up. <laughs> Connor McGregor or Mike Perry? Oh man, Connor, man. I knew Connor before I knew Mike Perry. Are you, do you, real quick, little little side bridge, do you have a prediction for McGregor versus Chandler? Oh man, that's hard to say because Connor just, I, you never know with him. Lately, he's been on a losing streak. He hasn't won since like, what, 2000? Oh, the Cerrone fight in 19. I want him to win, but, uh, cause that's good for my company. That's good for BKFC. Uh, but I kind of feel like Chandler's got <laughs> going to win. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough, man. Those yeah. layoff. But I mean, at this point, Chandler's kind of had a layoff himself now, too. So. I didn't think about that. Michael Chandler's taking some beatings. Oh, for real? Yeah, it's been so, I haven't. Hey. I've been so preoccupied studying boxing, man. I just stay out of the <laughs> MMA stuff. I've just been lacking. Yeah, that war with Gaethje, I don't think he's. Bro. Damn, you're right. You're right. Okay, Connor, my got this. Hey, and that's real good for BKFC. So, hey, let's Connor all day. Team BKFC, baby. Yeah. Uh, West Coast rap or Dirty South rap? Dirty South. Uh, Memphis, to be specific, all day. I, I, I kind of already knew the answer. <laughs> when you dress up to go out, dressing up fancy or dressing up cozy? Oh man, um, it depends. Because, see, if I got to go, like, when I went to the um, the Gag City Tour uh, concert that Nikki had here in Nashville, I had to dress all the way up. But if I'm going out on to Nashville, like, to watch, uh, I don't know, a nice little movie, go out for the game, I got to be cozy. So it all depends on where we're going. I'm sure. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting too old now, man. I can't do the fancy. <laughs> I'm in board shorts and sandals everywhere. Books. <laughs> Reading books or listening to podcasts? Books. I love reading. I, I'm a man after college. My people, it was so weird how for the longest they try to like make fun of college. But like, I think that was to like keep us from reading books. Like, man, I all I can say is that's that's literally why I became who I am is because I was very into um, reading as much as possible. So I didn't really watch any any shows or anything. I just pick up a book and. Go through them. There you go. There you go. I came prepared a little bit. <laughs> uh, between Memphis rappers, Juicy J or Young Dolph? Dolph. Rest in peace. Sorry. I love Juicy J, though. Like, that was... I was raised on 3-6 um, Mafia. Uh, I mean, back in, like, at freaking Project Pat. Like, I love all of them. But Dolph, he... Uh, I loved his attitude. Like, see, I seen him blow up from the beginning. Just to see him, it was like one time that he was asked, I think by by uh, Gotti to if he you know get signed, and he took the whole pamphlet, like, like it's a whole contract, and he like threw that shit, and he was like, "Fuck that shit, I'm I'm not getting signed by nobody." And I was like, "Dude, that's what kind of got, gave me my my mentality when it came to uh, like being where I'm at." Also, like I I never really had any managers. I've always managed myself, made my own money. Um, and I like that. I might not be financially where I want to be, but I know that I, I got all my money, all of my coin. I got every fight I ever wanted. I got the purse I always wanted, you know, that I, I guess that I was worth because you can only ask so much if you're not 
producing. But I'm really happy with, uh, you know, that because of Young Dolph. So that was a good question. I, I, I miss him, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he always was in the city, always put on for Memphis. Uh, shame he died, had to die in the city too. Yeah, it sucks, yeah, man. Especially on the, you know, trying to blow up a spot, put on, uh, what was it, the donut shop? It was a cookie store. R.I.P. Last one I got for you. Tennessee or Albuquerque? Oh, Tennessee, man. That's the only reason why I see I ain't left Tennessee. I could have been had camps other everywhere else. But I feel like in order for Tennessee to flourish, we got to put on for our city. And Clarksville right now is blowing up like crazy. Like you literally can't go outside anymore without somebody starting shit with you. So I feel like now is the perfect time to to get everybody together. We already got a badass gym in Nashville, Music City Boxing, uh, home of Caleb Plant. It is the home of like, they're the best. I love them. So no shade, not taking nothing from them. It's a lot of uh, beautiful, freaking awesome fighters coming out of that gym. So. Shout out to Caleb Plant as well, my favorite boxer. Um, do you have a uh, like, one certain star as far as you know men's boxing women's boxing across the whole span could be bare knuckle could be wbc is there like someone that you're like that's my that's my person i really like well i had a few people but i had to uh yeah i realized that they they didn't have they didn't like me very much as i like them so i had to change a lot of the people i looked up to because I didn't well, like the way they was moving. So so right now I kind of just look up to, um, you know, the people in my circle, uh, Adrian. I look, I look up to a lot of people like, what? Why, Why are you meowing at me? Sorry, she just gets a little feisty. She's like a part Maine Coon, so she'd be acting real crazy. But um, You're good. This is, we're, we're chatting here. She can. <laughs> right. Honestly, I look up to my man. He's, he's such a fighter. Um. He was, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me telling his if do you mind? So he was, uh, during the pandemic, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And, uh, just to see him be so positive throughout all that. Hayden, Hayden, shall let, let, the, let, let the cat, sorry, <laughs> she won't stop. But just to see him go through that and type one diabetes is misunderstood, uh, and confused with type two diabetes. Um, as in like, you know, you're just either you can't work out uh, to take care of yourself. You got like another physical ailment that's causing you to, you know, not be able to lose weight or you're just having poor uh, diet habits. Um, for him, it's just genetic, you know, just happened to him. Uh, and it just to see him go from the diagnosis to back into fighting uh, to be victorious. Uh, he's just been kicking ass, like just having all of his wrestling shows. And I just, I could see that he's going to go exactly where he said he's going to go. And uh, I'm just like, damn, you know, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I just got to be positive like he is and not let, you know, stuff that don't matter upset me like it has, you know, while he literally can't escape his problem. He's still, he's still putting out, he don't care who support him. He don't care who show up. He don't care who, who cheer his name. He's, it could be nobody in the crowd. Everybody could be booing him and he's still uh smiling um uh, not skipping a beat so <laughs> man shout out to adrian man <laughs> that's a real man that's what i'm yeah. talking about solid support system great role model just that's that's good people man good people i dig it i dig it um if there uh, is there anything uh s specific coming up anything that you would like to plug do you have uh you know any 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 like events anything at all that we want to get out there for you to to try to get that word out hey i'm trying to get back into jujitsu so we're going to be hitting some tournaments i mean while i'm uh waiting for bkoc to open up for me that's what we're going to be doing is grappling i'm going to be getting into the pro wrestling world so uh we've been practicing that and hopefully i'll be making my my pro debut soon uh pro wrestling debut soon and it'll be freaking awesome because uh I just love the the excitement and all the kids' faces, and it's just a whole another world of like, just like just fun. So I'm just excited for that. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll be. I was supposed to make my pro debut or pro wrestling debut like probably two years ago, but things just didn't work out. So um, we're ready now. 
That'll be awesome, man. I want to do that. <laughs> bad there's some shout out to everybody back home in the 209 like you were saying you know you got to put on stay loyal to the soil and everything a lot of my old uh like training partners and and buddies from back home and stuff they're doing pro wrestling and everything out there now too and i'm like man why why'd you wait till i left to do all that man i want to i want to jump off like, oh. right right and, and i did you did you grow up watching like pro wrestling like us yes i did i wasn't into it i'm not gonna lie um adrian is sort of who is putting me on and i want to supplement his career so i i'm not making any moves unless it's gonna benefit and push him to the next stage because that's what it's all about i feel like i i want to be somewhat of a manager i want to be mixed with like a little bit of elizabeth uh miss elizabeth and uh i just want to support him all the way um whatever it, it takes to get him to the next level that's exactly where i want to be positioned I applaud that power couple support yeah. support system we all need <laughs> honestly yeah. Yeah. thank you amen <laughs> gage well we'll we'll start getting this wrapped up what else you got any any final words oh um, no nah. i asked everything jenny thank you for your time appreciate you thank coming you on. Uh, thank especially you. with everything going a million miles per hour in your life and you never get a break but that's okay you know um it's just that's a part of life and i think that when we um ask for um certain things we got to be careful but when we receive them we got to be ready and i feel like the thing that we got to know is when we ask for strength we got to know that that's where we're going to be protected so if that's what we want it's because something higher within us is trying to warn us that that's where all the weak people won't be so uh when you are asking for strength know what you're asking for and get ready to uh, take on something that, you know, it's going to be very hard for the others to figure out. So I don't know I'd, if I could be that, if I could be a trailblazer of, of the youth and um, be another role model. Uh, I think all women of all sizes, styles, they're all welcome. Um, there's no shade to the OnlyFans girls. Uh, they're welcome. They find a way to create revenue for women and give them another path to, to do what they do. There's other people like me who doesn't want that kind of path. Um, and that's okay. I just want to be able to give everyone a place to be able to be like, I'm not a weirdo. There's somebody that's just like me that did it. And I'm going to do better than her. And that's what I hope. I want to inspire people to be way better than me. What are you doing? Get back out here. This is a little butt. <laughs> Jenny, with the real spill, the trill spill, we appreciate you so much. Like I said, we, no matter who's standing across from you, we're team, we're team Jenny Savage. So thank you, fam that man and uh <laughs> buddy make sure you guys go follow jenny the tennessee gangster on instagram always working always always you know teaching always giving back always doing doing the damn thing so we love you we appreciate you we're happy that you're healing up um shout out to adrian give him our best i hope you and the family everybody has a, a fantastic rest of your week thank you for doing this and we will uh you know you're your fight pit fam now so yes all day Any hey i'm gonna put you guys on my motherfucking banner now my clothes and shit yeah oh okay. hey okay. hell yeah let's we got it, you do to support you know we got you we're in your corner so uh thank you so much everybody thank you guys for tuning in the fight pit uh on youtube make sure you subscribe uh follow jenny the tennessee gangster gage Drew, High Fight IQ, the official fight pit. Is there anything that anything else that we need to plug for you before we get out of here, Jenny? House Hall Sports. Oh, uh, I am currently, I feel like a, a jackass for not knowing, um, but I am currently doing a charity for uh, Fort Campbell. Um, well, it's for our veterans, um, and it's, um, I feel so bad. <laughs> we can, okay. I can, uh, I can look it up and I'll put it in the description. Yes. So, too. yes, we just stay active. Uh, we, we count 15 minutes as a mile. It's just something that we do to be active and, and try to contribute to, to our veterans. Uh, you just join by putting in your donation. Uh, you could put in more for a T-shirt and then you just log in your your uh, miles and uh, you just show your support for our veterans. So I, I feel really bad. I don't know what it's called, but um, thank you so much for for. Um, inserting it to this uh, interview first yeah yeah when you get it just shoot it to me i'll make sure we put it in the description and, and blast it out there for you support the troops folks support Perfect. the troops yes that has been 
our episode for today with the one and only Jenny Savage, the Tennessee Gangster. Thank you. Tuning in. We will see you again soon. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Fight Pit fam. Peace.